CGIAR Research Program on Rice, Africa Rice Capacity Development Unit Head, Caddy Nani Drame, Africa Rice Lead, Flagship Project 4, Global Rice Array. How does this flagship relate to Africa? Uh, flagship 4 is the flagship that we call commonly the Global Rice Array. Uh, in simple terms, it's a, it's a network of field sites that we will use to evaluate a, set of, a common set of rice varieties throughout worldwide. So in Africa, Latin America and Asia. So this set of rice variety will help us uh, anticipate what climate change will, will, what will be the effect of climate change on rice so that we can uh, have some recommendations for farmers, which type of variety should they grow, in which conditions, which adaptation do they need, so that they can be better adapted to, to climate change and anticipate the, the effects. So the, the flagship, actually the flagship four is one of the five flagship of rice. And uh, contrary to the others, it's a quite a new flagship because it was not in the first phase of, of rice previously called Grisp. So this flagship will combine, as I said, different network, a network of field sites, but also different expertise will be needed to run this, this flagship. So you will have the physiologists, the, the, the geneticists, but also the remote sensing people, the GIS people. All those different disciplines and pathologists come together and really look at the different aspects of rice production, what would be needed for the future. What are the major challenges in Africa in terms of climate change? I don't know if we have been lucky, but we, we build a lot on the past experience with the collaboration with CCAF, and uh, we have some, let's say, we have something to, to build on, but uh, it's never uh, enough because sometimes you have uh, difficulty to have very accurate simulations or one scenario will tell you this, the other one will tell you another one, but I think they have been also improving on the methodology. So we already have an overview of what may be the future, but the future is always uncertain, so it can only be a prediction. So we will build on it and improve the methodologies and based on that we can also anticipate. Uh, the other difficulty I would foresee is um, how to cover all over Africa because Africa is a big continent. So Africa Rice is really uh, counting on the, on the network of NAS that we have in Africa so that we can also tap in every region, every country and bring together all this information. What are the main stresses that the flagship will impact? Well, it is anticipated that, for example, they, they may be in... Actually, it's not something uniform. In some countries, you may have more, more risk of drought. In others, it may be more risk of flood. In others, it could be high temperature. But we cannot say that all of Africa it will be drought or all of Africa it will be flooding. So it's very specific. And what we are trying now to do is we already have an overview of what will happen in each country. Now, what we want to do is really downscale the, the prediction to know at the action site, what will happen? If you take May, what will be what would be the likelihood of the climate in May? What would be the likelihood of the climate in uh, Senegal, in a specific site? So that's the work we would do in the framework of FP4, so that we can refine the climate prediction, not at the country level, but at the action site level. At the end of the project, what can rice breeders expect from this flagship? Actually, FP4 is a pre-breeding uh, program, as we say. So our immediate users will be, as you mentioned, the breeders, because in the framework of this FP4, we will develop, we will identify new donors of traits, drought-tolerant varieties, flat-tolerant varieties, etc. We will also identify traits, which trait is needed for the future, so that breeders can take it into account in their product profile, and design the varieties that would match that. But we will also produce uh, what we call the production risk maps. If you take uh, a country like Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, what is the likelihood of a particular risk, drought, flooding, in the next five, 10 years? So with that production risk, some decision makers can use it to also uh, design the country laws to say, oh, you know what, in five, 10 years, this is what may happen. So they already have the framework and the and, and, and the policies that could benefit the, the farmers. 
So it's not only about the, the breeders, but also agronomists can, can use as well the information we will generate. Because if you say that in a particular location, you need this kind of adaptation, you need this kind of uh, management practice that will help you adapt better in the climate. Agronomists can also build on that. So the, the beneficiaries are, are white. Our immediate ones are the, the scientists who will use our information to develop new technologies better adapted and later on the farmers and the, and the different stakeholders will benefit from the work that our immediate beneficiaries have done. How will this flagship link up with the national partners? How are they involved in this? It will be a network of field sites. That, that's the first entry point we, we announced because as you know, Africa Rice is small. Gris team could not cover the, the worldwide needs. So we count a lot on the national systems to deploy the varieties in all the countries, all the sites. The more sites you have, the better, because then you can know the specificity of each country, each site, what will be needed where. So the NAS partners will help us. Actually, it's a collaborative work. So we will benefit from their presence in a country, and they will benefit from the technologies we will bring in their countries. They will benefit from the results that we will obtain. So it's a really networking, uh, a networking flagship. What kind of capacity development is envisaged for the national programs in this flagship? In, in addition to just bringing the technology there, they, they, they will be trained. For example, uh, we are anticipating that for some field sites, we may have, let's say, the drone system so that we can uh, screen a lot of varieties in a short time and in a more, let's say, in a bit more accurate uh, speed than when you do it manually and we t it will take time, the condition may change before you finish. So the capacity building will be in the field at the action site, but also we will organize some training courses where uh, we will invite the NAS partners to build their capacities and also the infrastructures in at the action sites. So it will be from, from both sites. For more information, visit www.africarice.org.